Okay. We are really here. Look, there he is. We're here. We made it. We made it. Let me change that. LSU University graduates of 2020, you made it. One more rousing round of applause. Good job. And no student makes it to commencement without a tremendous amount of persistence, hard work, and sacrifice. We do not hand out participation ribbons at LSU. You have truly done your part. It is a great and hard-earned privilege to be counted among those who proudly call themselves LSU alumni. Not only have you earned it, but you earned it under the most extraordinary circumstances imaginable. Along with all the challenges that you could have expected to encounter during a typical senior or last year, you endured the added hardship of a historic pandemic that completely upended your final push to today. But you didn't let it stop you from finishing the job and achieving your goals. You found the strength and resolve to adapt to an incredibly disruptive situation, make the most of it, and overcome every obstacle to be here today. Throughout the year, I have used every adjective and superlative I could think of to adequately express just how proud I am of you. I have meant every word that I have said, but I've never felt like I ever found exactly the right words. And I have come to accept that. Just as this pandemic has been beyond description in so many ways, so too is my pride in you for everything that you have achieved despite COVID-19. But as tough as this year has been, and as much as I wish it would not have disrupted your last year, I ask you not to focus on what this pandemic has taken from you, but on what you can take from it. Terrible times are terrific teachers. The experience of confronting a great challenge in life and digging deep within yourself to overcome it provides you with invaluable knowledge and perspective that cannot be obtained in any classroom. When we encounter unforeseen obstacles, it would be nice if we could throw up our hands, sit down, and wait for someone to come along and clear a path forward for us. But that's sadly not how life works. You didn't have that luxury this year, and you won't have it in the years to come. The most successful among us are those who understand that great challenges and unforeseen obstacles are always going to arise in life. And when they do, you have to be prepared to rise to the occasion and do what's necessary to clear your own path forward. Thank God there are people who will help, and they will help a lot. But ultimately, we all need to blaze our own trails. That's one of the ironies of being both an individual and a part of a caring community. The pandemic has tested our ability to keep calm and carry on under incredible pressure, to be flexible enough to bend to the demands of hard times, but strong enough to not break beneath the weight of them. Never forget how you have persevered through this and always remember the lessons you have learned from the experience, for they will serve you well as you journey onward. Now, understandably, you've all been thinking a lot about the future, and I know you're all anxious to start writing the next chapter of your lives. I am as excited as you to see all the wonderful things you will achieve in the years ahead. And I also want to encourage you to resist the urge to focus too much on the future or try to rush ahead too quickly. Why? Because as life whisks us along and then passes us at breakneck speed, one of the greatest challenges we all face is to be present in every moment as those moments fly by. I ask you today, try and cherish every one of those fleeting moments. It is easy to cherish the best days of your lives, days like today. The real challenge is to cherish every day, the best, the worst, and the many, many more that fall somewhere in between. 
People have struggled with this challenge for centuries. Carpe diem, or seize the day, was coined by the Russian poet Horace more than 2,000 years ago, and every generation since has adopted its own version, cherishing every precious moment, living in the present, seizing the day, YOLO. No matter how you say it, it has challenged people for centuries because we humans tend to take time for granted. We don't cherish every day when we fall into the false belief that some moments are worth cherishing and others are not. We talk a lot about quality time and wasted time in our lives, but the truth is time has no relative value. It is all invaluable. And the only days of your life that are truly wasted are the ones you don't cherish. I have high hopes for you, and among them is my hope that you will never become overly ensnared in the trappings of either the past or the future. Far too many people aren't living in the present because they're pining for a past they can never relive or are fixated on a future they do not and will never control. Now, I gotta be honest. I am not so great at always living in the moment. I'm thinking about my next meeting or planning for the future or the next law review article I'll write or when my workout hopefully will end, or what my great American novel should be about. I'm an achievement-oriented person, so I don't always focus on the present. Now, earlier I said, terrible times are terrific teachers, and they are. So I'd like to take a moment, maybe two, to talk about a terrible time in my life that taught me just how precious every second of every day is. This is something our entire family went through, and it served as a stark reminder of just how invaluable time is and how important it is to live in the present. And I know many of you have been through similar trying experiences, especially with COVID. In October of 2018, our middle daughter, Ashling, was diagnosed with a very aggressive and rare form of non-small cell lung cancer, an incurable, very aggressive and rare form of non-small cell lung cancer, which we knew was inc incurable from the start. Now, Ashing was born right here in Baton Rouge in 1989, just three years after I arrived on campus to begin my career as a professor at LSU. Now, Ashling's name in Gaelic means dream or vision, and she was our dream and our vision. When she was diagnosed with cancer, Ashling was in her second year of medical school at Brown University, and she was slaying it. As I'm sure you can imagine, it was awful news for her and for the entire family. Me, Susan, Patrick, Sarah, Jeremiah, Jennifer, Ethan, Prithel, and Depes. I spent much of the next 10 months traveling back and forth between Baton Rouge and Providence, Rhode Island so I could be with Ashling as much as humanly possible. Susan, and then later, Jennifer and Ethan, basically lived in Providence. We always remained optimistic. We always understood that no matter what happened, we needed to be fully present and living in every single moment we had together. Whether we were watching a sunset, drinking a beer, or sitting in a hospital room discussing treatment options, time was ticking and we wanted every minute to be as long and as slow as possible. Like all cancer patients, Ashling had good days and bad days, but every day we had with her was exceptional, and we loved each and every one of them, even though the rest of us at times were ready to kill each other. When Ashling could, we traveled and we celebrated. We laughed and we cried. We were happy and we were afraid. She and I rode the Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs ride at Disney World. I will always love that ride. Besides Disney World, we went to Mexico and drank margaritas. Jenny and Ethan got married by the water in Newcastle, New Hampshire, four months before they had planned, so Ashlyn could be there. We all went with them on their honeymoon to Bar Harbor, Maine. And right before we left, Ashlyn and the rest of us found out that Sarah was pregnant with her first child, Gilbert who is named for a character in one of Ashling's favorite books, Anne of Green Gables. When Ashling had to stay home, we hunkered down and we made the most of it. All the time, we washed our hands, coughed into our elbows, and lived as careful as, as we could to avoid infections. 
It was sad, but good COVID preparation. Tragically, Ashling's courageous battle with cancer ended on August 6, 2019. For those of you who have lost family members or loved ones, you know those wounds don't ever really fully heal. And you know what? You don't want them to. The loss will always hurt. But we also know our loved ones don't ever really leave us. We carry their spirit and our heart everywhere we go for the rest of our lives. And in doing so, we enrich both the moment in which we are currently living and the moments that we have lived through. So today, let's be present in this incredible moment that we're so fortunate to be celebrating now. Let us together cherish this wonderful day and every minute of every day to come. Ashling will receive a posthumous MD from Brown in May. And I can tell you, all of us Galligans will truly be living in that moment. It will be a major day in Galligan family history. And shifting gears, every single one of LSU's previous 302 commencement ceremonies holds a special place in the history of our great university. But I was doing a little research recently. After all, I am a professor. And I discovered that today's 303rd commencement has a little extra historical significance. Right now, in this very moment, we are taking part in only the second commencement ceremony to ever occur in Tiger Stadium. Only the second, yep. <laughs> only the second out of 303, which means that fewer than 1% of all graduating classes have had the great privilege of having their commencement held inside this most hallowed space. The first time a commencement was held in this pantheon of concrete and steel, in this Louisiana gumbo of humanity, in this cathedral of college football, and this sacred place was 30 years ago. In May of 1990, the one-time actor and two-term president of the United States, Ronald Reagan, delivered the first commencement address in Tiger Stadium. That class got a past president of the United States. You only got an interim president of a university. <laughs> now, now, I apologize for that. <laughs> but a, a bald one at that. But not even a past president of the United States could match the enthusiasm I feel for you right this minute. Whoever the speaker, this commitment, this day is truly historic. And I think it's most fitting that today we honor a class like no other in the history of LSU. Now I'm sure you've taken some pictures. I've seen you take pictures during today's commencement. But if you'll indulge me for just a second, put the devices aside, or at least just hold on to them, and take a look around you at this awesome scene and capture some mental snapshots. Breathe in this incredible moment. Cherish it. Tigers, from this day forward, each and every one of you will forever have a special place in the history of LSU and Tiger Stadium. You have made a long and incredible journey to reach this moment. And there have probably been at least a few times along the way when you questioned whether you would actually make it. Well, LSU graduates of 2020, I say to you again, you have made it. Congratulations. Go Tigers and forever LSU!